we draw graphs all the time on paper. I've been drawing graphs all these lecture long, and I say, oh, we'll put something here, we'll put something here, we'll put something here, we'll put something here, and we'll put another one here, and we'll go across, and so on and so forth. And we don't really care how the edges look, because as I've been saying before, this is just an illustration of the graph. It's not meant to be drawn on paper. But suppose we actually did care about things like this, about lines crossing. This is actually a big problem when you're designing chips, for example. You have individual components on the chip, so maybe you have a chip layout here. You have one component here, and you have one component here, another one here. You really want to make sure that you don't, you don't cross these lines, because these are actual wires, and that'll get your signals crossed in the actual literal sense. And uh, it's even a problem when laying cables. So let's consider the following really very simple problem. Right? I have three houses. And there are new houses, and they all need to get, you know, gas, water, and electricity. So all three houses have to be connected to all the lines. And I don't need to point out to you what would happen if a gas line and electric line crossed, or electric and water line crossed, or even a gas and a water line they crossed. We don't want the lines to cross. We don't want the cables or the pipes or whatever. So maybe we'll dig a pipe here. So this is kind of easy. So we'll do this. We'll do this. And we can connect up this way. Okay, so far so good. Now let's get the water lines to all of them. So we got them all there. That's not crossing. Now we've got to get the electricity line. Um, now it's getting a little bit trickier. So let's see. We've got one thing. We can send the electricity line there. And this one maybe we can go around and come around here. And Okay, so far so good. We've got a gas line to deal with. Well, we can get the gas line over to the second one here like this. And now it seems like we're stuck. This third house is kind of blocked. We can't go here, we can't go here, and we can't go here. It's all blocked. Whatever we do, we're going to cross a line here. Now, we don't know that it's going to cross. Maybe our drawing was bad. You know, Maybe we shouldn't have um, uh, built our houses where we did. Maybe we should build the houses here. So we put, I don't know, one house here, one house here, and one house here. And we put gas, water, and electricity outside. I don't know, maybe it'll be a bit easier. We put gas here, here. We can do this. We can go all the way around and get that. Go all around and get that. And we get that. Oh, but we're still stuck. So it seems like no matter what we try to do, we're stuck. And I guess the question we want to ask ourselves is, well, is this possible at all? And that brings us to the topic of what are called planar graphs. Planar graphs are graphs that actually can be drawn on a piece of paper without any kind of crossing. And you've all seen planar graphs are realizing it because one of the most common examples of a planar graph is a map. So for example, this is the map of the US. It doesn't look anything like a graph, but pretend every state was a vertex. So every state's a vertex, so let's put one mark here. So we can put one mark here. That's Utah. We have another vertex for Colorado, another one for Wyoming. Now, since they share a boundary, we'll draw an edge between them, like this. And if you keep doing this, you'll get a planar graph. Why will you get a planar graph? Because, well, states can't cross each other, because that would be very, very messy. Notice there's no edge between Washington and Montana because there's no shared boundary there. And you can go on like this. So, play, so maps are the most common example of planar graphs. And the thing about a planar graph, it says it's not just the graph. It's not just vertices and edges. It's exactly where you place them on the screen. And so you have to kind of play around with your vertices to make sure you can play them. And there's a very nice game you can play. It's called planarity. And there's an app for it. And here it looks something like this. So here I have a graph. I'm told it's planar. So I need to move the vertices around so we don't have crossing. So maybe I can move this. Okay, that works. I can move this. I got it. So let's try to go to the next level. So I have this thing here. This is a bunch of crossings. That's no good. Uh, maybe try to move this out here. Move this up here. See, it's harder than you think. Uh, I'm going to bring this all the way down there. 
just seems like the right thing to do. Okay, move this up here. Um, bring this down here. And looks like we got it. But as you can see, it starts getting more and more complicated. So even though the graph is planar, it's not clear how to actually draw it so that it has no crossings. And so the real question is, can we tell if a graph is planar or not? So let's go back to the original example with the utilities. I didn't really tell you what the underlying graph was. I said that all the houses have to be connected to all the utilities. So let's try and understand what the underlying graph of connections actually looks like. So again, we had three houses. And again, I'm just going to look at the graph, so I don't really care where I draw the things. Now. And my goal is to connect all the houses to all the utilities. So what I want is to eventually have a graph that looks like this. And of course, I'm drawing with lots of crossings now, but I'm going to ignore that for a second. Okay. This is a very special kind of graph. It has two sides, this side and this side. Notice that the vertices on either side don't have connections to each other. There's no connection between gas and water. There's no connection between the two houses. Such a graph is called a bipartite graph. A bipartite graph usually has, instead of one vertex set, it has two sets of vertices, A, B. And each edge goes between one vertex in A and one vertex in B. And so in set notation, you would say that the edge set is a subset of A cross B. So you can't have an element of A cross A. There are no edges there. You can't have an element of B cross B. There are no edges there either. Okay? So in a bipartite graph, there are two sides, and in each side, there are no edges between the elements of that side. All the edges go across the sides. So this is a bipartite graph. It's actually a very special kind of bipartite graph because if you notice, I can't add any more edges to it while keeping it bipartite. I've added all possible edges I can. And as we know with graphs, whenever you say I can't add any more edges, what you call it is a complete graph. So this is really a complete bipartite graph. Okay. And when you have a gra bipartite graph that's complete, it gets a special symbol for it. So this, uh, if a bipartite graph has two sides A and B, and the graph is complete, then we look at the size of A. Let's call that, I don't know, R, and let's let's say the size of B is S, and we denote this graph by K R comma S. So in our example above here, this has three vertices on one side, three vertices on the other side, and all possible edges between them. So this can be written as K three comma three K for complete with a K three comma three. There's also notation, if you might recall, for a regular complete graph. So for example, the complete graph on three vertices where all the vertices are connected to each other is written as K3. The complete graph on four vertices, again, everything connected to each other, is written as K4. OK? All right, good. So what we're really asking is, the question that it boils down to is the following. Is K3,3? planar? And that's the question we want to answer. Okay. We won't be able to prove to you, this is the, the proofs of these, the statements I'm going to make now are very involved, so I'm just going to make some assertions now. But it turns out that the answer to this question is no. There is no way to draw K3,3 on a sheet of paper without crossings. And in fact, there are, there's another such graph like this, which is K5. And as we said before, K5 is a complete graph on five vertices, which looks something like this. Also, not planar. 
And these graphs are actually kind of special in the sense that if you took off any edge from them, you'd be able to draw them in a planar way. As we saw with K33, it was always the last edge that was causing us a problem. And with K5, you should try it for yourself. If you take off any edge of K5, and they're all the same, really, because it's a complete graph, you will be able to draw this graph in the plane. So they're kind of the smallest possible graphs, in some sense, that cannot be drawn in the plane. But it gets even better. And here's, roughly speaking, what you can say. Any graph... that is not planar must have either a K33 or a K5 hidden inside it. So it's not just that K33 and K5 are the are two graphs that happen to be non-planar and there are others. It's that they describe non-planarity. That any graph that's non-planar has one of these bad boys hiding inside them. So what does hidden mean? Well, let's define some operations on a graph. So let's take a graph G. And let's remove an edge. Okay, so this is G and this is G prime. So we say that G prime is a subgraph. of G, because we deleted one edge. Let's take a graph G and insert an edge into it, insert a new vertex into it along an edge. So it might look like this. So I've inserted this new vertex in the middle of an edge. And again, let's call this G double prime. G double prime is a subdivision. of G. Here is the theorem you can say. If you take a graph and you delete some edges, okay, and let's say now the graph you get looks like a K33 or a K5 subdivided. So for example, um, Let's say that your graph, after deleting some edges, looked like this. So it had six things. Yeah. It had a bunch of edges. And it had something like this. Okay. Now, this graph is not K33. It's got all this stuff on the side. But this graph here is a subdivision of K33. Because you just took the actual edge between this node and this node and you subdivided it. If your graph looks like that, it is not planar. And in fact, if a graph is planar, it cannot have any pieces of this hiding inside. This is a very famous theorem due to Kuratowski, and there's another version of it due to uh, Wagner. And it's a very deep result, and I'm, there's no way I can go about trying to prove it here. But it allows us to describe graphs that are planar and graphs that are not planar. And the next section will spend more time talking about planar graphs and what we can say about the number of edges in a planar graph, and so on and so forth.